Josafá. Thank you, ISSBD. I've been part of this uh, international society for 20 years since I was a small girl. And uh, it's really my pleasure to, to be here to the, today and uh, talking about uh, publishing. I've been working on this matter for 25 years. And it's, I know it's really important, especially when you are starting your career, starting your work as uh, an academic and a student. So I want to tell you some, give you some tips, actually, uh, about the work uh, you have to, to do. And uh, as you can see, I am Brazilian. My first language is Portuguese. And uh, don't be shy. You can make questions in, in your English. And I'm very glad to know that we have a very uh, large list of uh, students from Africa and also from Brazil being part of this, uh, this uh, webinar, this broadcast. And uh, it's really uh, important to have people. I also. Uh, work in Africa in some uh, universities, so it's a, a great pleasure to talk with you. Uh, so I have uh, an outline. I'm going to talk about uh, writing a research paper uh, and some questions that we can have and we can ask ourselves when we are writing uh, a paper and some do's and don'ts that uh, we have to take in, into account when we are preparing our papers. Uh, to warm, warm up, let's start with this saying that hell is sitting on a hot stone reading our own scientific publications. And I'm going to be very honest with you hell is not the hot stone, you know? It's really hard when we are working on our papers and uh, when we go back to our history and we see that, oh my God, did I wrote this? I don't actually uh, agree with my own ideas when I look back to my own work. So don't feel bad about this. You have to write, you have to do your best for your career. We all know that if you don't have uh, papers in your CV, you don't get a job and you need a job. That's why you, you are studying. So it's a part of the investment that you have to, to do uh, for your career. However, you have to do your best from the beginning. It doesn't mean that uh, you are going to agree with this information your whole life. So, um, but uh, writing a research paper uh, is always uh, an important uh, step of your uh, professional life, and you have actually to conduct a study and analyze your data sometimes before writing your paper. But first tip, start doing your paper from the beginning of your uh, work, research work. Don't wait till the end of collecting data and having all the information you need, because sometimes you don't uh, really like your work when you are finishing it. I mean, I used to tell my students, uh, we don't uh, actually finish our research. We first get annoying about this work, you know, so then we have to finish our papers. So you can write the method section, you can write some uh, introduction information from the beginning of your work. So it's important to, to take it it into account. Uh, but now it's time to write, it's time to publish. We know that uh, when Josepha mentioned 
our uh, ratings and everything. That's the main issue nowadays and on scientific world. So we don't count citations anymore, but uh, you guys who are starting your careers, you have to be aware of citations. So you have to write good pieces of work to get it cited and get references out of it. Um, so you have all the information about your uh, research and you can start to organize. Back in my time, we used to use paper. No? <laughs> now you don't have papers anymore, but you can have files in your computers and about the main ideas, you can have references, information that you, st you still need, some uh, links between sections, but don't forget every time to keep the references that you are using. And when I say that, I'm not just saying, oh, I remember that this idea is out of this author. No, you have to have the full references, otherwise you won't keep track of the work at the end. It's a lot of work. So uh, we have to make questions uh, about our career, our academic uh, investment, and all this process that we go through. And uh, we, I imported those questions from the engineers. And, but they are still uh, very important for psychology. Uh, we have to ask ourselves about when should we write, why should we do this, for whom should we write, uh, what are we going to write about, where are we going to publish it, and how should we write, and how much does it cost. So uh, we are going to uh, talk about each one of those questions uh, to get some answers. So, go ahead. When should we write? As I said before, you have to start your research and still uh, and begin to make uh, appointments and uh, annotations and get the, those information filed. But when uh, we actually have ideas to write, we have to read a lot. And read means to study the papers that we are reading. We, we don't just read the papers. We have to actually make notations and um, go after the references that that paper uh, has. And we have to really feel that we have the information of those papers that we found in, important in our minds during our research and um, when we are read, writing the paper. Then when we read a lot, we get so many ideas that we have to have a paper from our own. So that's when uh, uh, we say that we feel pregnant of our own paper. It's going to be uh, born soon. Uh, and to have a paper, you have to write a lot. And more than just writing, we have to go after people who can read our papers, our notes, give some uh, information about this, give us a feedback about uh, the things we are writing. Uh, there is no other way to write good papers uh, if we, are don't, uh, we don't do that. And Professor Brett will talk more about review and uh, resubmit, and that's part of the important work of editors and reviewers and those guys 
sometimes we don't like them a lot. I know, I've been editor also, but they, are, they can be our best friends because they help us to publish a better paper. So we always get very nice uh, tips or reviews out of uh, their uh, support. One uh, thing that I usually uh, tell my students is to write and read the, the piece I wrote it aloud. Because when you read aloud, you can feel that it makes sense, what is missing, uh, repetitions and other uh, things that we used to do, especially in some languages like Portuguese that we use long sentences. Sometimes we repeat ourselves many times. It's not the case in English, but uh, it's a, a really nice way to, to feel the sentence and the uh, information that we wrote. And also very important is to have someone who is our friend, who can read the papers and the uh, notes that we have. And they have to be our friends because their critics are not going to be against us as people, as persons, but it's going to be against our piece of work. And that's the way we have to understand it. It's not a, a friend that uh, once you you got uh, his or her criticism, you break up. So it, it, it's really important. That's why you, we have our advisors, our research team, so those people can read the papers and then uh, give us some good feedback. And um, always prove, read your report, please do it. We editors know that. It's not, when we as editors uh, get a paper with uh, misspellings or problems with the references or format, we always have this first feeling that, wow, if this person treated this final piece of work in this way, can we trust their data, their uh, review of literature, their references? No, that's the first feeling we have. So uh, please do this proofread, it's very important. Ask again someone to read the final version. Uh, there is this uh, professor, uh, Daryl Ben who says that we have to give to our grandma to read the final uh, version. I don't agree with this information because she doesn't deserve it, you know. But the idea <laughs> is, <laughs> the idea is that uh, we have to give someone who can read the, the paper and give you a sense that she or he understood what is it about and uh, what do you want to say, uh, even not caring about manovas and ovas and uh, this kind of other problems. No. So uh, state the problem, organize the paper around your ideas and uh, around the criticisms you, get, you got before submitting. Uh, you can send it to the editors and cite uh, likely uh, referees, and, but it, it's another tip, important tip. Uh, who are going to be your referees? People who work in the same field, especially in Brazil, we usually know who is going to be in our review board because uh, we are a small community, but uh, you, you can uh, cite those people 
you can take a look at the journal and see who is publishing in this journal and read the, those papers. And that's because once you cite someone, you know that this person uh, is very possible to be your review. And we all have egos, so it's a good idea to, and even the editor has ego. You don't have to see his work, but if you cite uh, his uh, journal, he's going to be very happy. Uh, so this is the, a cycle of conservation, you know, you can always uh, work, you always work in a, a community and you have to be aware of those who are uh, part of your community. You have to know the most important authors and the updated uh, journals and, and papers in your field to have this uh, in part, as part of your uh, work. Why should we write? Uh, to communicate our ideas. Uh, doesn't make any sense to be part of the academic world. We just have our information up to ourselves, you know, or to our group or between you and your advisor. You have to share your ideas. You have to communicate your ideas. It can be very important. I usually tell my students also, you have to write a paper which is the paper you want to read now when you are starting your career. I have some papers that I look back and say, oh, if I had this before starting, going to the field, using this measure, or uh, doing this intervention, I would change a lot in my work. So uh, that's the, the, the paper that you want to write. Why is that? Because papers are pieces of science to advance the, the knowledge. So that's very important. You don't just uh, write a paper to have one more line in your CV. You have to write a paper to have more knowledge out there. And it's good when you are the author of this part of knowledge. You also have ethical requirements. Uh, you have the uh, IRB or the ethics commissions and com committees. And then you have uh, to answer to all the process and have a report to them. You have to build on scientific knowledge as I said before, this is the most important part of uh, publishing. You can inspire practice and applications of your uh, knowledge. I, as uh, Joseph has said, I work with street children and abused uh, girls and boys, and it's very good when I go, out, I go to a community center or a service and they say, oh, I'm using this paper to improve my work. It's not just to uh, build on the, the knowledge to have another paper. It's to work in the field, to have people in the field using the work you are doing. And also to make marketing of uh, your work. If you don't marketing, if you don't market your work, don't wait for no anyone to do it. This is the academic hell. So be uh, aware that you have to send your paper to your colleagues, to people that you are using uh, their references, to uh, students. And in Brazil, we have open access of our journal. So it's, we spread out the, the news in, in the uh, websites of journals and other the library we have, virtual library, and also you can post on Facebook, on other uh, social media, no problem. It's important to 
have people knowing the work you are doing. And one question uh, that is very common is uh, for whom should we write? And it's really an uh, important point. You, if, you have, if you are writing a thesis or a report of your uh, research uh, in your uh, super uh, advisor or uh, examiners, uh, are the ones who are going to read it. You have to think they are reading your uh, report to judge, to mark, and to rank your project. So that's the language. The language that you have to use uh, is very scientific and get to the point that those people are really going to, to use to do this. Uh, if you are writing a paper, uh, you have to think about uh, who is reading, and probably the first ones are going to be the referees and the public who that uh, know uh, science. So you have to judge uh, innovation, how original it is, uh, quality, and uh, you have to think that people want to read your paper and learn something out of the paper they are reading. It's very sad when we find, oh, that's the paper I want to, to read, and I, in the, the end, at the end, we just say, oh my God, I didn't learn anything out of this, so we have to learn. If you are writing a research proposal for a, uh, to apply for a funding body, a body or a group that uh, who the people of uh, the referees, you have to judge your, you have to know that they are going to judge your aims, the quality, what you are promising to, and uh, how appropriate is your work for this. Uh, special uh, funding proposal. So it's really important to, to uh, take it, it into account. And more than that, we can also write a paper which is popular for uh, just for the uh, people who are reading magazines or newspaper. It's also po possible and th this is part of your marketing also, so you have to be uh, aware that people who are very intelligent, who are who wants to learn more, who wants to to use it in their lives. So you have to write up something that uh, can be entertainable, but also who uh, which can introduce uh, new information to their lives. So. Uh, take into account uh, your audience every time you, you plan to, to write. What are you going to write? Well, you can write a paper that you plan from the beginning when you have your research proposal and your uh, first piece of work, but you can always uh, write a paper that makes sense when you have your results. Dario Ben also say that we have to start writing a paper out of our results. I also don't agree, I guess. Uh, we have to write mm, the methodological issues first and we can start doing a uh, review of literature. But uh, he's right when he say that you have to write a paper which has the best part of your results. So uh, take uh, into account this information. Uh, that's why, because um, that's the way to advance knowledge and not to write another paper. Uh, we can see in many journals that we have more 
of the same over and over again. So not um, much information, not much new uh, approaches or methodology, but it's again and again the same kind of uh, information. It's boring and sad, so don't do that. Uh, next, please. But don't, don't be so uh, anxious. Uh, I know people who went to psychotherapy because of papers, it's not the case. So you can do your best. Where are you uh, going to publish? Uh, you have to choose a new or a, a old but a very well established uh, journal. It can be general or just a special uh, about the issue you are working, but you have to, to make a, a good uh, search of the journal. Uh, journals that you are citing, journals that you have uh, the authors you are citing, publishing, uh, journals. In Brazil, we usually uh, use open access, as I said, so we uh, want to, to have our papers published in the best uh, journals uh, which are out there, so people can sit in their computer and find the full copy and so they can read and cite our work. Look always at the quality of the journal. Uh, if you have good referees, you get good feedback and then you can improve your papers. You, we usually can send our papers to the best journal, AJBD for example, or uh, journals that uh, we are sure that we are going to get a good answer, a good information to improve our work. Look always at the uh, uh, recent uh, published papers. As I said before, those guys who are publishing in the, pa in the journal you are going to submit are probably the ones who are going to be your referees, so be aware of it. And publish too early is as bad as publish too late, which means don't send something that you really don't think it's the final version and the final because it's not going to be the final version uh, when you submit. And if you get a, a, a message from the editor very soon saying, oh, this is good, I'm going to publish with no uh, changes, no uh, improvements, no feedback, find another journal. It's not very serious, <laughs> okay? So, uh, but you have to publish. There is this day that it's not only your advisor who goes after you saying, you have to publish, you know? You have to, to send your paper, to submit your paper to a, a journal so you can get some feedback and improve your work. In psychology, it's not very common that we have a lot of uh, problems with sending papers one month after or later or earlier, but it's changing, I can tell. I have this experience, so you better send your papers soon. Where are you going to publish also? Uh, Rejection uh, rate is a measure for quality and prestige. So we all see that good journals are very proud of their rejection rates. And uh, we know that lower level journals get less papers offer than the, the good ones. So if they get less, they reject less, and they are more uh, willing to publish your paper. But you have to 
send your paper to a leading journal, and if it doesn't accept, send to another one. And uh, we also have to say that um, rejection letters are not very nice. We hate them. Professor uh, Larson is going to talk more about this. But remember that we have those of us who publish a lot, we have a big collection of rejection uh, letters. We actually don't save them, you know, we just hate it, you know, but we, we have. But you have to have those uh, letters to improve your work, so don't be that mad. How should we write? The first criteria is uh, to write, to use the language of science. And language of science means accuracy and clarity. You have to write simple, the way you speak, the way you, you see in journals and uh, publications. You can use um, a paper as a, an exemplar, a model. So you follow the steps. I'm not saying you have to copy it. It's different, completely different. I'm saying that you can use the same uh, template to f write your paper. And you, you will find papers like this in many good journals. You have to organize an outline and use the references, use the norms of the guidelines of the journal you are going to submit to. Uh, it's another part of the nightmares of editors is to get papers completely with uh, other uh, guidelines or references, style, or it's really very bad. Psychology is, is good because we have the APA publication manual. This is going to be, it has to be your Bible. You don't have to know it, all, all the rules and norms and everything by, uh, in your, you don't have to have all those information on your mind, but you have to go and look every time you have a question. So uh, this is a Bible. You don't have to know everything, but you have to have it. And you cannot, you can have it in your office, in your table, not in your bedroom, please. Okay? Uh, write simple and write direct to the people uh, to whom you want to inform your work. This is a good example of uh, writing simple. Okay. No. <laughs> so, and I can, as editor, I can see many people using a very sophisticated language, which is not very useful for the readers and for the public. Okay. How uh, other tips that we have to have? Tape uh, uh, your main results above your desk so you can see your results. Follow a, a good recent paper as a guide, as I said. Use short sentences, even if you are writing in Portuguese or Spanish, because the language of science is English and we have to follow the rules. Uh, write the results first and then the, the introduction. You can reorganize your introduction. Uh, remember that the abstract and the title are very important pieces to be written because those 
parts are the ones who, uh, which goes to the uh, websites and to um, reference lists and data sets and everything. This tip is uh, important also. I used to do this and I really like, but I'm the, uh, not the, the same generation as you, but I print out a hard copy. I forget about it. And then I reread the paper before submitting it. It's good to sleep over for one or two nights before sending, so you can always have uh, better uh, ideas or reorganize the paper and so on. Uh, Daryl Ben also s talks about uh, having a good outline. And a good outline is in the format of uh, an hourglass. Go ahead. So you have the introduction discussion of literature, uh, review, uh, some findings they have. You can, you should have always both sides uh, supporting and opposing the, the main points. Uh, and those aspects have to lead to your specific problem or uh, hypothesis. And then you have your methods, which is the unique part of your paper. It's the only part of the whole literature that belongs to your research. So it has to be very well described, very well written. And then you have your results, discussion, and where you, can, you should compare and contrast contrast uh, your research findings with literature review findings. And you can make some recommendations for future research. But those recommendations are part of uh, the things that you learn out of your work. You don't make recommendations to the work of other people. So uh, you cannot suggest that, oh, you should do this or that. You don't know the full body of literature. So many times it's out there. You have to th talk about your uh, new steps uh, in the, for the future. How much does it cost? Well, well, this is very important. Learn to say no. Learn to say no to anything which is not your priority. And this is very important. So when you get this invitation to give a lecture somewhere or to give, uh, go to a, a small meeting or to spend your whole life in meetings or attending to seminars or, or other uh, activities that doesn't really uh, help you to improve your um, paper, just say no and focus. I uh, usually tell my students, if you don't know how to write the first sentence, write the second sentence. If you don't have time to write, sit down for one hour every week and start writing, start reading. And you learn that soon this one hour is going to be very uh, short. You need more. You need one hour, two hours, three hours to uh, actually write uh, your paper. So uh, learn to say no to anything which is not uh, your priority. And this is just a, a draft of some how to organize your uh, work and how people spend their time, their time to, to work. So the first one is, as I said, if you stay there working, you will learn that you need more time to, to work. Go ahead. Well, some do's. 
uh, you have to omit needless words. You have to avoid meta comments on the writing, avoid jargon, voice and self references. Uh, use the tense, which is uh, the, the one that the journal uh, usually uses, and avoid uh, language bias. Those uh, tips are really uh, short, but you can learn out of any reading that you make uh, about uh, writing. And I have some good references that I can share with you later. Uh, if you want to write a very boring paper, you can just avoid focus, originality, and personality. You can write long contributions. You can include implications and speculations. You can leave out uh, illustrations and omit steps of reasoning, use abbreviations and terms that uh, are used only in your church and not in other churches, uh, suppress humor and flowery language. You can write a very boring paper in psychology if you just use statistics and not psychology. Uh, out of it, and uh, you can quote numerous papers for trivial statements. So use reference of other people without really giving uh, life to your publication. Uh, don't work to a deadline. You always have to be prepared to, to have all the steps I said before, give to someone to, to help you, someone to read your paper, to give you feedback. Um, introduce lots of ill-defined terms, so you have to have a very good definition of all the terms you are using, and more than that, use the same term uh, throughout your paper, not changing because I want to write uh, synonymous or uh, uh, tell people that I know a lot about this. Uh, we have to, ve to, he to be ve very uh, uh, clear. Uh, we cannot omit key references or uh, exclude our co-authors. We have to be fair with people who work with us. And we cannot draw broad generalization uh, from small results, saying that this paper is going to resolve all the problems of psychology, which is not true. And uh, be simple, be direct, and don't give up. You have to keep working, even if you are tired of your paper, ask someone to help you, ask someone to read and give you some feedback let it be there for a while, and then you can uh, go back to it later. Uh, when you are submitting a paper, uh, don't overload the paper with um, irrelevant information, and don't miss the chance to have a talk paper. You can wait a little bit more, you can give to another person to read and give you a feedback so you can have a chance to have a talk paper. Don't forget to uh, thank people who support you and all the fundings and grants and everything. Discuss your results before presenting them. You have to, uh, Andrew Fulgini, says that you have to write your uh, results section first without numbers. And I, I think this is very, very bright. You know, write the results without numbers and use the numbers and figures and tables as illustrations. And when you do that, you get the discussion of, out of it more easily because you can 
see your results in, in another way. Uh, make yourself liable to, or don't make yourself liable to plagiarism. And this, is, this can be another topic for uh, uh, a webinar or a broadcast because it's really important. Don't copy, use the references, uh, de give the credit to people who have the idea and published before, and uh, go after the references that you are reading and read and study all the papers you are going to use in your reference list. Don't use secondary references because sometimes it can be a really uh, big uh, trouble. Don't forget your title and abstracts are the business card of the paper, as I said before, and don't forget to proofread your paper before submitting. Uh, well, I'm going to skip this because this is a lar uh, Dr. Larson's main issue. Go ahead. And so if you look at this hourglass, the first one, and your paper looks like this, you have a lot of work to do, you know? You have to be uh, really uh, good on organizing and redoing, rewriting your paper till it gets in a, a good shape to submit. Writing a good research paper is an art. Actually, it's like I have a, a publication which starts saying that it's like to tell a tale. So you have to tell people about the tale of your research doing. And everything has to be very clear and very uh, uh, accurate and very objective. You get better at it with practice. So as much as you write, as much as you write well, as much as you get feed, feedback, more uh, improvements you have. Uh, get used to rejections. I told you we have a collection of this kind of letters. I'm not talking about this uh, longer. And uh, sometimes when you get a paper reject, it's often a, a reflection on the way you wrote it and not the work you do. I mean, uh, the, the, I've been seeing throughout my whole life as editor that uh, we, sometimes we have very good work, very good research written in a, such a bad uh, piece of public uh, submitted paper that uh, we, we say, oh, it's a pity. Uh, those guys should give more uh, out of them uh, to publish a better paper or to submit a better paper. So we, we can see very bad research published in good style papers, good, very good looking papers, and we can see very good research uh, which cannot uh, be published because the authors don't give enough time and don't invest enough to, to finish uh, their good papers. And take your reviewers' comments uh, seriously. If they say it's not clear, don't tell to your friend or to your colleague, but that's what I want to say, and you say aloud what uh, your ideas. You have to write down in a clear way. If your reviewers say it's not clear, it's, it means only one thing, it's not clear. So you have to go back and do it again. So references, it's just a joke. Use optimal number of references. We know uh, 
every day we are learning more and more about this, that we are getting smaller uh, introductions section. The introduction is, is getting shorter. And uh, the list of references cannot be longer than the full size of the paper. So you have to have a balance between the references you are using, use the good ones, use the updated ones, and don't go back to the philosophy to, to have all the information you need uh, to, to put in your paper. Some, next please, some references and some, next, some market, marketing. This is uh, our, this is written in Portuguese, but this is our last uh, book about uh, scientific production. It's in Portuguese. And the next one, it's another book. That, well, it was published in 2008, I guess. And you can, if you read Portuguese or Spanish, you can download it. Uh, in this website, it's uh, open access uh, book. So this is also another joke. Don't use self-references all the time. Usually when you see uh, papers, if you look from the references to the beginning, we can see, we can uh, say who is the author of the, the paper because self-reference is very common and but be good with your advisors. Remember that they are very uh, successful researchers. They can help you a lot and they should be your authors in the beginning of your work because they can help you to be a better author of your scientific work. Next, please. Thank you so much, and I'll be glad to answer to questions.